Okay, how about now? Yeah, I've got sound now. Okay, cool. Oh, I lost my voice. <laughs> no. Unfortunately for you guys, no. Right, okay. So tonight we're going to do uh, VSP. So I did prepare in C64 Debugger Mayhem in Monsterland just to quickly show you what I mean by VSP. And then we'll, we'll crack it and crack on and get into it. Um, I don't know why it's not loading. Ugh, I'm not having a good start. This is good. Let's try this. Yeah, I think I briefly showed it before, but tonight we're going to actually demonstrate how to do it instead. Because um, it's a it's a cool technique, and I think it's um, there's a few things about it that are, are useful to know. Even if you don't do VSP, there's some there's some really useful stuff in there. Um, like stabilizing rasters, for instance. Speed this up. So VSP is a way to scroll the entire screen in very very little raster time. Um, Actually, I could probably just show the, the demo that I created as well. So I did a little demo before. No, it doesn't work on all VSPs. It does work on um, it does work on the ultimate, and it works on most new ones. Um, and there is a way to do it without it crashing, but it's not that easy to to do. Um, but it's it's fine for most. I'd say I've probably had one in ten E64s so that it's not worked on. So the way it does it is by uh, tricking the Vic into shifting the entire screen over, and this is why when when VSP when a game has VSP, you see it scroll like this in the in the debugger. The screen actually isn't moving; it's just redrawing the data on the on this column here, basically as it moves across. And that's essentially the basics of it. Um, it means this bottom line is unusable, as you can see the data that that's down there. Is incorrect so the bottom line has to be blanked out um, you can do that by creating a invalid uh, character set down there or you can do it by um, uh, not an invalid character set sorry an invalid Vic mode or you can do it by coloring everything black down there instead um, so I created this little demo just before uh, the stream wherever it is Download it, I guess, because I don't know which version I've got. So, so using the um, using the Ghosts and Goblins graphics that we we had. Um, there's a few glitches in it. It's not it's not perfect, um, but uh, it's just something quick to show you the technique. And we're gonna we're gonna rebuild this from scratch. You can see it's doing the same thing. I've added a few extra colours into the to the map, into the gravestones and stuff, so you can see it, it's doing a full colour scroll. Um, but yeah, let's let's go and do that then. So, so let's create a new file in here. Uh, let's call it VSP. Thank you for the host, Bay64. Welcome to the stream. So I do have a reference file that I'm going to be looking at now and again because there are a few things that are kind of difficult to remember at times so I'm going to keep that on, on screen so I can see it um, and we'll go through everything step by step. So first of all we're just going to create our normal entry to a program like so uh, and create our entry point. And the first thing we need to do is create a stable raster. So, is this a technique for horizontal scrollers only? Yes, yeah, so you can use it with um, multi-directional scrollers, but this this particular technique is only for the horizontal portion. So there is a technique called AGSP, which uses this as well as line crunch and FLD to do um, the vertical scroll as well. Um, I think I showed it in one of the effects grab bags when we looked at um, oh, I forget the name of it now. There was some kind of RGP prototype that we looked at um, and that used AGSP scrolling which is a combination of this and another effect. Hi Master Blaster. 
Okay, so the first thing we need to do this um, is a stable raster. Now, the reason we need a stable raster is in order for VSP to work, you have to trigger it at a very specific point on the screen with one cycle of accuracy. Because every character on the screen takes one cycle um, away while it's being drawn, basically. It's, it's exactly one cycle between characters. So in order to scroll the screen, random, uh, various amounts between 0 and 39 characters shifted the whole screen. Um, you have to trigger it at a, a very specific point um, with cycle accuracy. So we need a stable raster. So I'm going to create a raster and I'm going to show you what I mean by a stable raster and an unstable raster first. So let's start by... So this is... Uh, we disable our CIAs. Uh, interrupt. So I'm going to comment it as I go along as well. Uh... And we enable our raster interrupts um, and then we need to create a, an IRQ entry point Um, and we need to set the line for that. Now, the, the line we need to do this on is very specific, but for now, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna create something which. Um, uh, sorry, that should be and. I'm just gonna create something which shows what I mean by a, an unstable raster. So, this is set the line. And we'll do it up in the border somewhere, I guess. Uh, 28 or something. So this this section here is just set in line 28 on the on the screen. Um, then we need to um, actually we don't need to do any thick banking out, but we'll uh, bank out kernel basic. And then we just need to. Uh, Acknowledge interrupt and clear the interrupt. And then we'll just, in fact, let me tab that all in a little bit as well. I like it tabbed in so I can put labels like this. Science in progress. Yes, Dr. Mears, we're going to do um, a VSP scroller. We're going to attempt to anyway. So it's an IRQ, so I need to push um, all my stuff onto the stack so I can restore it again. Which means at the end I also need to... Is that big enough, the text, by the way? Get a bit bigger, there we go. So... So this is a basic raster interrupt, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the border color and decrease the border color. And when we run this, we should be able to see what it's doing. Oh, I need to always remember to acknowledge your interrupts. Let's put comments all the way through this, just so you guys when you go back to this, it makes sense. So, this is what I mean by an unstable interrupt. So, all we're doing is we're increasing the border colour. Um, oh, that geek dude. Thank you for the raid, that geek dude. Welcome to the stream and welcome to everyone that's come along with, with that geek dude. Hope you're doing well. I'm just explaining how to stabilize a raster at the moment. So our raster interrupt is firing every frame on, on line 28 and you can see here it's not stable, it's flickering all over the place. It, it's Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's here. You, you'll notice that it is 
one character apart. So it looks like we've got about three cycles of, of jitter here. Called jitter because it, it does jitter basically. The the point where the entry uh, the point where the IRQ starts is in the middle of a line. Uh, in, it, it varies but from from frame to frame. So hi Dom, welcome to the stream. Um, so the reason for this is because when an IRQ fires, it has to finish whatever instruction was happening before. So if you've got an instruction that's four cycles long, then it has it's going to either finish on the beginning, so you get three cycles of, of jitter because the first cycle has started, two cycles uh, or one cycle of jitter. So you have to kind of account um, for that when you're when you're looking at rasters like this. So the trick that we're going to do is we're going to use some timing techniques to stop this from jittering and make it perfectly stable. So I'll show you how we do that. So let me get, because this is where I need my reference here. Uh, otherwise I will not remember everything in this. So to stabilize a raster um, is not that difficult actually. The first thing we need to do um, is we need to create a second IRQ. There's a couple of ways to do this, but this is what's known as the double IRQ method. So we're going to create what's called the stable IRQ. That's our new entry point. Um, and then we're going to set that as if we were doing any other um, IRQ. And then what we're going to do, we're going to increment the line number. So now we're saying fire a raster on the very next line. So basically the line underneath this. So we're saying fire on, on this very next line here. And then we acknowledge the interrupt that we're in as well. So the next interrupt can fire, otherwise we'll be stuck running this one. And this is where the trick comes in. So this is a command I don't think we've used in any of the tutorials yet but um, I'm going to explain it now. It's another transfer command and it's TSX and what that does is it transfers the stack point which is a single byte it just tells the the processor where the, where the stack is at the moment and we put it in the X register and then um, we clear interrupts so an interrupt can still fire and then we just do a load of NOP commands Um, the exact number you need um, varies if you're on NTSC or, or PAL. But the important thing to note here is that these will never finish firing. So what's going to happen is the raster is going to get into this position. It's going to save its state like we want it to. It's going to set up the next raster, which points to here. Um, it's going to set the raster to be on the next line. And then it's going to start executing these knobs. And what's going to happen is before it gets to the end of these, it's going to start this here. Now the reason we transfer the stack, um, the reason we transfer the stack to the X register, is so that when the the when the raster jumps to this one, we can transfer it back from the X register back to the stack pointer again. And that means when this IRQ finishes, it's like this one has finished. So we'll get returned back to the same point in the code. But now the difference is is our raster should be less jitter so let's just check that again I need to make this point back to the original IRQ at the end so let's put that in here uh, like so and let's run that again and you should see now that our jitter is a lot less skipping lines for some reason. What have I done wrong here? Uh, the extra stack, yeah. Acknowledge the interrupt. Oh, I need to restore my line number again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a label for my IRQ line here. I'm going to make it 2.8 like that. And then I'm going to use that here and here as well. So you have to make sure that your second interval points back to the first one again.
Hi, cheers. Welcome to the stream. So you can see this, this is actually stable now. Now, I think I'm just lucky here at the moment because this isn't necessarily always going to be the case. Um, we're lucky because I think all it's doing is, is the same operation uh, in here, which is a jump. But if you add other stuff in here, that could be jittery. That could still jitter. Um, I'll explain why. So when this, when this raster gets called, it's always going to be running these NOP instructions. So the point at which it, it actually jumps into this location here is based on the jitter that happens when it gets into this IRQ. And then these are always two cycles long. So when it gets to here, it's either going to be zero or one cycle of jitter. Because you're always going to have less than the instruction it was running. The instruction it's running is, is a NOP. So it's always going to be zero or one. Again, though, that's still not accurate enough. We need to be more accurate than that. I'm kind of annoyed, actually, that that's, that shows us stable because that's not always going to be the case. So, yeah, in the main code, so again, guarantee, yeah. Yeah, so, for instance, if... Um, I don't know, I had to do this here, actually. Uh, I mean, even if I was to do something like... Um, if I just did... Actually, if I just do some knobs and a bit as well, that might be enough to cause a jitter. Yeah, there you go. So now we've we've got the jitter. Uh, this is the worst you will get at this point. The worst jitter you will get will be one cycle, and this is exactly one cycle. You can tell it's one cycle because it's exactly a character wide. You see, it's it's jittering there and there, and it's only one character wide. So we'll leave that in because this is a good test of the jitter. So we need to try and get rid of that now. So the next trick is um, to basically waste some cycles here now. So the number of cycles we need to waste depends on whether you're using a PAL machine or an NTSC machine. Uh, I'm using PAL, so I need to I need to waste exactly 44 cycles here. So the way I do that is with this technique. It's quite a common technique. Thanks for the host, Dob. Appreciated. So this this pattern, loading next with a number, decreasing it and branching if it's not equal to zero back to here, this wastes a number of cycles, and that number of cycles is is this number here times five plus one. That's how many cycles you you end up wasting. So in this case, I'm wasting um, forty one cycles. And then on the end, I'll do a bit zero at zero. Bit is three cycles. So that's 44 cycles. So this wastes 44 cycles. I'll get rid of that jitter thing there. This is two cycles. So now we're up to 46 cycles. The next thing we need to do, um, is that right, 46? Oh, but we will be, because of the way the interrupts fire, we are, um, uh, seven seven cycles plus jitter here. So we're either seven seven to eight cycles at this point. So in the best case scenario, in the lowest case scenario, we're on nine fifty three cycles at this point here. Uh, times five minus one. Uh, no, times five plus one. Because this is this is times five, uh, but the last one is one cycle less. But this is also two cycles, so it's 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 times five plus one from from here to here, basically. Yeah, yeah, count the LDX as well. Um, so now we're up to uh, 50, 51 cycles here. So I'm going to actually start numbering them from, uh, no, sorry, seven, yeah. So at this point we're at nine cycles, and this is 44, so this is 53 cycles right at this point. Now what we need to do is we need to um, load the value of the, the raster line and compare it with itself. 
So this takes eight cycles to do, which means at this point here, we're at 61 cycles. Now, Power Machine is 63 cycles, and the comparison result that won't actually be compared until the first cycle of this instruction here. And so what we can do is if we do this, this instruction will take two cycles if these are both the same, in which case it will, will jump to here, or it will take, sorry, it will take three cycles if these two are the same. In other words, it hasn't gone onto a new line, which means at this point, it will be on the 64th cycle. If it hasn't, if it has gone into the new line, in other words, if this is now 54, because we were actually on eight cycles and so not seven there, um, then this would be at 62, and these lines would no longer be the same because when it does the comparison, these numbers will be different, in which case it will only take two cycles because it won't take the branch, in which case we'll be at 64. So both times will always end up at 64, regardless of what the jitter is when we enter. So now if I do this increment and decrement here, what we should see is it's, it's perfectly stable and it should be right at the edge of the screen as well. So it's right at the edge of the border area. Um, bear in mind this is debug border so these, this bit doesn't count. This is the actual border area. Um, it's right at the edge and it's perfectly stable despite the jitter we've got there. So <laughs> that's how you get a stable raster. It's I'm, I'm going a bit quick through it because I do want to get the rest of the VSP stuff in place. But if anybody wants me to go through that in more detail with them um, on, on Discord, please let me know and we'll, we'll definitely go through it again. Um, there are some other ways uh, to do stable rasters. So forcing a bad line as well can create um, uh, a stable raster. So if you're doing an FLD effect, for instance, you can quite easily generate a stable raster like that. Um, the trick to remember is is these cycles, um, the, the, the key to it is this branch instruction here. Um, so it's getting the cycle down to a one cycle jitter and then timing, just wasting some time until you can do a comparison right on the edge of the border. And then the comparison will either be, you'll either be on the same line if there was no jitter, or if you're off by one cycle, you'll be on a different line. And then you, by using this branch, you can you can either add two or three cycles at that point. So that's how you generate um, uh, that's how you generate a, a stable raster. But obviously that on its own is not much use to us. So what we need to do now, uh, we'll leave this in here because that's correct. We need that, but we're going to replace this this border border color change here. In fact, we can leave this in place so we can see where it's happening. Uh, but we're going to waste some more cycles here now. So um, the reason we need to waste more cycles is because now we need to get to a very specific point on the screen. So we need to go to the next line again, um, which I'm going to do by... So let me think, I've got... I'm just looking at the code I've got up here as well. So I'm wasting 55 cycles there, but I'm using 12 here. So I need to waste... 43 cycles so if I do uh, this again same with 08 so so remember it's times 5 plus 1 so this will waste 40 cycles and I need to, need to waste 42 so I'll put a knop on the end like that there we go and now this is where the tricky bit comes in so for VSP to work you have to trigger uh, a very specific point on the screen. So I'm going to create a little virtual memory space up here. Uh, uh, call it uh, offset. And we will reset that value here, I guess. some better comments around here zero jitter and not if one jitter Those are three or two cycles to be added, and 
sind. Must be stable here, right? Okay. I'm gonna get rid of those cycle counts in there. I would, I would advise anyone kind of looking through this code to kind of learn how to count cycles like this. Um, I am gonna keep that one in there though, so because that's kind of useful to know. Uh, counting cycles is is absolutely key to to this stuff. Right. So the 50 frames per second scroller um, in Iridium actually only scrolls 18 lines. So it scrolls 18 lines uh, and it doesn't scroll colors at all. So VSP allows you to scroll 24 lines with full color as well. Um, and it does it in almost no, no cycles. As you'll see, the, the actual cycle count is a couple of lines, a handful of, you know, maybe 16 lines or so to do a, a scroll. Um, and then only once every uh, once every full screen you have to do a color copy but even that can be be um, optimized and I'll show you how to do that as well when we get to it but stable rasters are really useful for other stuff as well so if you want to open the side sorry pardon me if you want to open the side borders you'll need a stable raster to do that because it's a very specific point that you need to do it VSP allows you to do this kind of scrolling at incredible speeds as well. So we're going to waste some more cycles here, which is what we're doing. And now we're going to do another little timing trick. So what we're going to do here, we're going to load our offset in. At the moment it's zero, so I'm going to set it to something a little bit different so we can see it actually happening. So I've set it to 16 or 10 in, in hex. Um, we, we're going to load our offset, we're going to half it. So this is going to give us a value of 8 at the moment, but it's also going to put, if the value was 17, it would put a 1 in the carry bit. So it's going to, it's going to, any half value ends up in the carry bit. Um, and then I am going to store this value at a self-mod branch. I'll explain this in a second when we get to it. Um, And now we're going to do another one of these branch tricks. So this line is always going to come after this one, but how it gets to this line depends on whether or not there was a half value. So when we half this, if the value was odd, then the carry bit will be set. If the carry bit's set, then it will skip over, um, well, it won't skip over this instruction, but it won't execute this branch. It'll just go to the next line, in which case it will take. So two cycles if offset was odd, three if even. And the reason for that is because we can't have an instruction that takes one cycle. So we need to deal with things in terms of two cycles. So if the offset is 16, we need to deal with that in eight groups of two. If the offset was 17, we need to deal with it as eight groups of two plus one extra cycle. And this is how we get that extra cycle here. Then we have this self mod branch. Uh, I'm going to use uh, bit 02. I'll explain why. So, what the bit instruction does is it basically ands the contents um, of the memory address that it's given and sets the, the overflow flag if bit 6 is set, the negative flag if bit 7 is set and the zero flag if the value is zero. Um, and that ends it with the accumulator, but it doesn't actually store anything in the accumulator, it doesn't change the accumulator. But the important bit here is that we do this to waste three cycles at the end of here. But the end result of this as well is it will also clear the overflow flag. Now the overflow flag is only ever set by the bit instruction, um, the add instruction or the subtract instruction, as well as the like, uh, Pull processor uh, flag and the uh, clear clear overflow flag and what it basically means is if a value is negative and you subtract one so if you've got negative uh, 127 or ne negative 128 that's 80 in hang on I'll show you it's easier like this so that's a negative number if you take one away from that, the sign bit, which is this one here, 
gets cleared and all these get set. And now it's a positive number, but a high positive number as opposed to a very low uh, negative number. And at that point, the, the, um, the overflow flag gets set to say that it's switched from a negative to a positive number. Um, not from not in the middle. So if you just went from um, if you went from zero zero like that to to that, it wouldn't count. That's not that's not an overflow because you're still on the number line. Basically, if you think of an if you think of a the binary as a number line going from minus 127, uh, sorry minus 128 to 127. An overflow is if you basically have to wrap around to the beginning of the number line again. If you're just moving across the middle, the overflow will never be set. So doing this basically clears that overflow flag. And the reason we want that is because what we're going to do now is we're going to do a branch if overflow clear. Uh, and we're just going to set star here. The reason we do that is because what we're now going to do is we're going to add 20 knobs in. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... One, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what this is doing, we half this value, um, and we store the value here, and that's basically telling it to branch a number of knobs. Each one of these is one byte. So whatever value we store in this location is how many knobs it will it will branch. And this allows us to jump a couple of cycles ahead, an exact number of cycles ahead, based on that. Um, based on that value in the offset. So now if I do, uh, if I put this in here, in fact, if I just change that back, I need to change this back because I'm moving the timing. So this would now be 10, not not right. So let me comment this. So this wastes an exact number of cycles uh, plus offset. And if I run this, yeah, it is the it is the forbidden text. Oh, why's that failed? What's going on there? Uh, what have I done? If my branch plus one. Very clear. I've messed something up somewhere. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I'm backing that interrupt twice. I don't need to do that. Shouldn't be that low. Oh, I forgot virtual at the top. Thank you. Well spotted. So there you go, we've set this and it's now at this position on the screen. So if I change the value in, in memory for that, so it's, our value is at 02 and I set it to 0 and go, you'll see it's moved to here now. And oops. And if I set it to 01, it moved one pixel across. And so on and so on so we've basically created a way of starting the raster from either zero on the right hand side all the way up to 39 on this side the reason i'm doing it backwards will become apparent in a minute um, so if i set 39 on this switch is two seven and now the rest is all the way over here so now we've got exact control over where we fire this raster on here so with that in mind, we can now start doing the VSP. So VSP is basically tricking the VIC into um, delaying when it fetches data for the line. Um, so we need to uh, we need to trigger this on. Uh, I think it's on. Is it on a bad line or is it just before a bad line? I can't remember the exact position, but I know if I put two F here, um, the initial raster will fire on two F. This stabilized raster will, or the, the start of the stabilizer key will be hit at line uh, 3 0, and this will actually get fired at line 3 1, which is where we need it to happen. Um, and instead of incrementing the crease in the border, what we do instead is we increment and decrement um, 
well actually I, I always do it this way around I don't think it really matters which way you do it but um, the oops the D011 register so it's, it's one of the sprite uh, the VIC control registers I think it's the one that deals with um, let's have a look it's vertical raster that's the one so it deals with uh, text mode uh, screen height um, and vertical ra vertical um, scroll as well and what we're doing basically is we're changing it and then changing it back very quick and that that has the effect of tricking the raster uh, tricking the vic into thinking that it shouldn't fetch the, the the character data at that point and as you can see there what it actually does is it shifts the entire screen across so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a value of 1 in the offset uh, here and we're going to tweak the timing so that we get exactly one pixel, uh, one column of offset and we've got none there at the moment so let me go and check my timings. Uh, this is why I, I prepared beforehand to, to do this because I can never remember how to do these timings. It's a lot of trial and error so uh, okay, I've got those timings correct, got those correct. I might have too many knobs actually, let me just count my knobs. So, uh, 19, yeah, I've got one too many knobs, I think. Uh, oh no, that looks right actually. No, I have got one too many, there we go. The timing for this is absolutely critical. There you go. So we've got an off offset of one, and as you can see, the screen has shifted by one character. But what you'll notice, if I if I line it up on the bottom here, it's not actually shifted, wrapped around to the other side. The the R's for here have actually moved up one line as well. So what we've what we've actually done is is basically it's almost like it's copied the memory back one space. What does the BVC star does? Um, so the BBC star is a branch if the overflow is clear and star just means to the current address but we're overriding that value here um, with a value based on the offset so whatever the offset is divided by 2 uh, I'll put it here actually offset divided by 2 uh, like that there we go so yeah, we, we've shifted the entire screen over. So you'll notice two things about this. First of all, is that it's not it's not just wrapping the screen around. It's actually shifting the lines up a row as well. And the other thing as well is because it's shifting the lines up a row, we get some junk data down here. Now this junk data is unusable. Basically, this is we we have to kind of discard this. And the way to do that is by either hiding it with um, an invalid VIC mode. Or by setting all these colors to black here so you set the background to black these will automatically be black when they come on um actually i'm not sure if they will they won't over this side anyway so you have to kind of set the whole bottom row to black um, but I'll, I'll demonstrate that soon so if you look now if we change the offset value and we change it to two you see we move over one more one more at a time uh, and if we set it to 10 it will scroll way more over and you can do that all the way up to 39 so if I uh, uh, 27 like so you can scroll the whole screen all the way across and so this is the basis of ESP because this also scrolls the color RAM and that's something um, that's something you can't do very easily um, because you can't double buffer the color RAM so that black thing at the bottom is that by purpose that's a side effect of this trick it's it's kind of um, it, it's it's another one of these Vic tricks that's actually tricking the Vic into doing something it shouldn't be able to do. Um, it's a bug, basically, if if you like, or um, or, or a kind of, I guess you would call it a feature more because we've definitely learned how to tame it and do do things with it. But it's an un unintended side effect, let's say, um, and as a result, you get some data down here because this the Vic no longer knows what to fetch for this area because we've shifted the whole screen. Uh, 39 characters in one direction um, which means the 39 characters it's filled along the bottom it doesn't know what to do with actually some of them you can actually get access to so I think the sprite pointers and stuff you can do some things with um, 
So I think you can blank some of them out, but you will be stuck with sprite pointers there, so it's hard to get uh, get rid of it. CSP is not about moving a number of pixels. VSP, uh, yes, exactly. It's about moving a number of columns. So we're going to combine this with um, pixel scrolling to do actually smooth scroll everything across. So the trick is, what you need to do is as you scroll, so if we go back to where we were at the beginning um, with just one column, as you scroll here, you've shifted everything. In the first first, 30, first 39 columns are correct. This last column, however, is incorrect. So what you would do is you would redraw just this one column. So instead of redrawing the whole screen uh, or shifting the whole screen uh, using a, a memory copy, copying each individual byte to its new location, you use this trick to, to make it look like the whole screen has been shifted. Um, and then you just draw this one column in. And this one column is basically the column that was over here, which is why when you see VSP, you will see uh, in the debugger, you will see that kind of almost like two halves of the map and a swipe moving across them. Um, but let's let's have a look at that now. So um, if we let me bring up my guide again. Um, okay, let's load a map in. So I've got some I've got some maps prepared. Um, so let's just load some data in. So we've got um, got characters set. Uh, Charles.bin. Um, yeah, it scrolls up also. You'll see you'll see how we get around that in a minute. So so the area that's been scrolled off the screen uh, that appears on the other side of the screen appears on the other side. Or other side of the screen but up by one one character um, so when you draw the new column you have to draw it down um, you have to draw it one one character down from where where it looks like it should be on the screen um, okay we're going, to, we're going to import the character set uh, we're going to import uh, some the map I guess so for this demo um, I just did the maps directly in memory, the same as we saw with um, with Ghosts and Goblins actually. And this is the reason I picked the Ghosts and Goblins one. In normal games you probably wouldn't want to do it like this, you probably want to do it with tiles, but the principle is exactly the same. Um, it's just that for ease of, ease of kind of coding this it's going to be a bit easier to do it with a, a map like this. Um, I can't remember where that runs to in memory, so I'm going to put the colours uh, well, it'd be 24 lines, so I'm going to put the colours at 6800. I think that's probably all right. Um. Oops, binary. Okay, so with that in place, what we're going to do now is we're going to apply it to um, the, the Ghosts and Goblins map. So the first thing we need to do is actually draw the map, the first screen of the map. Um, so if I just go and have a look, I have got this code already. I'm going to copy paste this because this is e going to be easier than um, typing it all out again. Uh, 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 not that it's difficult code, but it's self-explanatory code. It's not. It's not uh, difficult. I'll talk through it before I, before I put it on screen. But um, uh, before I, I move off from it and go on to something else, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna push the IQs down to the IRQs down to the bottom as we go. I'm just gonna put our new routines here as we go along. So so this is copy our initial routine. So. First of all, we're going to change the Vic banks over. So we do set the kernel here. So I'm going to do a Vic bank setup here, and we're going to use bank. Actually, let's do it with the memory maps to show you how to work it out. So, oops. Uh, is this a feature of the six five ten or the Vic two? Um, yeah, it's the Vic two. feature yeah <laughs> uh, okay so we want to set first of all which Vic bank we're going to use that is going to be bank one so we need to set the value one zero into DD zero so one zero this 
it's fit back one. It says fit back one, but it's, I, I always get confused by. Oh no, it is fit back two. Sorry. It's the order that it does it, I and mean, it's weird. Um, and then we're going to set a screen of. Go to that. We're going to. Uh, Where's that not picking up? There we go. We're going to set a screen of four thousand, so it'd be this one here. So we want zero in these bottom ones. And a char set of 0800, which is this one. So we want this in the top four as well. So we want... Uh, so that's a screen. 4,000. Char's at 4,800. I'm going to store that D018. Then we need to set multicolor mode, which... Again, I can never remember how to do this. And it's D016, and I think we need a value of like D8 or something. Uh, yeah, D D8. Oh, and we'll also set the screen width to uh, 38 columns as well. So we'll set D0 here. So this is 38 columns. Uh, MC mode. And if you do two of its there, yeah, it really was. Um, okay. That should be enough to at least get started on it. Um, and then here we'll do... Um, copy initial screen. There we go. Thank you for the follow, Flory's Lava. Flory's Lava. Oh, God. That reminds me. Takes me back. Jump around my living room on cushions and chairs. The 38 column thing is so you can have a gap so when you do the fine scrolling around, right, yeah, exactly, so you won't see the flicker on um, on either side of the screen as you do the fine, fine scrolling. So we're going to call this copy initial screen. All this is doing is just basically copying the data from the map into the screen at 4000. Um, and then using the, the characters to look up a, a color value in a color table and store that at the 800. Um, and then the very last thing it does is it, it draws a line, a, a colored black, uh, colors the last line of color RAM in black to hide that garbage. Yeah, it's a very good discussion as well. I've, there's some some really inf interesting information about it. And Linus, who worked out how to do the Linus Hackerson, who worked out how to get around the um, uh, the VSP bug, is absolute genius for being, being able to work that out. But um, I wouldn't want to want to write a game that uses VSP and is VSP safe. That would just be really really difficult to do because basically every every eighth byte needs to be unused. Um, throughout your entire VIC bank. So that that can be quite, I think it might actually be the whole of memory or it might just be the VIC bank, I can't remember, but it's every eighth byte in at least 16K of your memory needs to be unused. Um, yeah, Linus Ackerson, there you go. Um, but it's very, very cool. But to be honest with you, um, I, I think if you're gonna write a game and you want fast scrolling in it, I don't think it's too much of a problem to use VSP. Creatures used it, Mayhem in Monsterland used it, and there's plenty of people who play those games. Um, and you know, it is a bit of a shame that there, you know, there are a few machines that will crash with it, but there's plenty more that don't crash with it, and the the effect is really good. You can put some, put it to some really good use. Um, okay, so hopefully when we run this now, we're we getting an error. Uh, I cannot find maps.bin because it's map.bin, that's why. Charles, colours, yep, yeah, okay. Uh, looks like we've not got the right character set in here. Let me just check. Uh, DB100 is not being set. Is that because I'm using DB100? Oh, because I'm not putting these in. There we go. I've got to actually put the number thing at the beginning. I do that a lot. Whenever I use binary, I forget to put the little hash symbol at the beginning. Okay, it looks like we've got the right Vic bank now. Um, but not the right value here. 21 in D018. Uh, 
What? That doesn't look right at all. Why are we getting that? D018. Okay. Uh, check my... Actually, I've already got this in code somewhere, so let me go and check my other one. This is the second time today I've written this, so... Uh, D018 is set to... Oh, two. It's that simple. Okay. So it's set to two for both of them. There we go. So we, we've got something in place now. We just need to set the colours up. So we'll do that next. Thank you for the raid there, Jerry. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. And welcome everybody that's come along with Air Jury. We're just in the middle of making the Ghosts and Goblins map move at ridiculous speeds. So I'm going to set the border to black and set the, uh, the, the background to black. And then I'm going to go and grab the colours in here because I can't remember what they were originally. And those aren't them, those are different colours, so uh, let's have a guess. So I think it's OF for D022, and I think it's 09 for D023. Yeah, there we go. So what I did with this as well is I took... Um, I took the map from Ghosts and Goblins and I, I trimmed it down to 24 lines. Now the actual map is uh, like 19 lines or something like that, but I've I've basically extended a bit of one of the later levels into the bottom of it here, so you can see you can see more because this should be able to um, this should be able to scroll 24 lines no problem. So a jury and I played Thomas the Tank Engine on Amiga by Ian's request. Wow. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm I'm amazed by that or, or worried by that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to think about that. Right, I'm going to take a quick two minute break guys. Um, I'll be as quick as I can and when we come back we'll get this map moving. Alright, uh, let me find the right button. There it is, be right back. Okay, I told you it'd be quick, it's bloody freezing out there. What pinball game was the best on the 64? I, you know, I don't think I ever played a pinball game on the 64. I'm sure, a pinball soccer, I'm sure other people can uh, recommend some. Alright, let me bring up my reference again. Okay, so... Yeah, okay, so what we're going to do next is the scrolling. So we're going to need some new values up here. So we're going to need our X scroll, which is going to be... Um, value from 0 to 7 so this will give us these two values will give us a whole screen's worth of scroll we can scroll fine from 0 to 7 and then rough from 0 to 40 on here um, so we need to reset that value down here uh, and then we need to add so, some new code into uh, into our raster so after we've done that um, after we've done this bit here instead of jumping straight back to the beginning here instead what we'll do is we'll create a new raster here we'll call it the shift IRQ and we basically do the same thing again so we um, sorry not the same thing again we we save state as we did before and we restore the state as before and this one will point back to our original IRQ at the end some blank space in there there we go uh, but now we want after the FR, uh, after the VSP has been done we want to fire this raster here and we're going to do this down at the bottom so we'll do this at actually line F2 that's round about where I like to do it I'll, I'll explain why I do it at F2 in a minute um, Uh, okay, so we've now got a rest that's firing at the bottom of the screen. If I just do a run this, you'll see you'll see the break in the in the screen where it's happening. Oh, I forgot to act my interrupt here. 
that's all I need to do. Yeah, it should be. And there you go, so it's a bit epilepsy inducing, but um, we've now got a raster that's firing at the bottom of the screen. This is where we're going to start doing our shift here. I'm going to leave the increment in so you can see just how much um, border time we're using to do this. Um, so we need to shift the X scroll. So we'll also have a value called speed in here. So I'm going to put speed in here. Um, and we'll initialize that to, well, we'll just initialize it to one for now. Um, that should be zero, uh, actually. Okay, and then what we're going to do, every frame, actually, I just realized X scroll needs to start at zero, seven. So the scroll goes from seven, uh, and then it shifts to the left. Uh, as you go down, so we need to start X scroll on seven. Um, all right, let me bring this up because I already did this as well. So I am cheating a little bit here, but I'll explain everything that I've done as I go along. Uh, 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 uh. Right, okay. So here is where we're going to update our scroll value. So we're going to load the value in X scroll. Is it called X scroll or did I just call it scroll? It is called X scroll, okay. And we're going to subtract speed from it. And if the value is still positive, then we don't need to do anything else. And we'll jump to the, to the skip, uh, which I'll put here. Otherwise, we need to do something in a little loop here. And what this loop is going to do, it's going to... We've taken X scroll from 7 down to a certain value. Once it goes below 0, it becomes a negative number. So at this point, we're going to add 8 back to it. Store it in X scroll, And we're going to call a new function, which we're going to call update scroll. And this is going to shift our offset. Um, Sorry, no, this is going to actually implement our scroll. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to increase our offset by one. So we've moved over by one. Um, and update map. And then we're going to get check X scroll. And if it's still minus, then we're going to go back. So for every for every eight pixels below zero that X scroll has become, we, we, we are gonna um, we're gonna increase the offset, the, the VSP offset, and we're gonna update the map. The update map is gonna draw a new column down one side, and update scroll is just gonna be a little function which I'm gonna put up here, uh, here, and all update scroll is going to do is if I can find the routine um, is basically take our number uh, our scroll value uh, and it with F8 so we get rid of any scroll value that's in there or it with our new scroll value store it back now the only thing we need to do here is if X scroll is currently negative we don't want to do anything here so we'll only do it if it's positive so if the accumulator is positive at this point then we're going to apply the scroll otherwise we'll return but basically if it's negative uh, let's go back down here again it's a bit neat on neat it should probably be in separate files but I'm kind of rushing a little bit um, so when it calls this if this value is still negative then it's not actually going to update the scroll it's just going to skip this um, it's going to do the, the, the VSP update uh, and then it's going to jump back here. So it's going to keep doing this and then at some point this is going to become positive and it will update the scroll on the screen. Um, there's probably a better way of doing this but it's just how I did it today. I wasn't kind of paying much attention to um, to getting this as, as optimal as possible. Hence why there's also this one here because if we skip over all of this, so if this is skipped we still need to update our scroll, so we still need to store it and we still need to 
to do that there. In fact, we probably don't need to do that there at all now. Get rid of that one. Uh, start, yeah, so we can simplify that. Let's do that. So we don't actually do need to do that check in here. Mm -mm -mm. So we actually don't need to do that. Okay, cool. So that's going to update our scroll, and then we need an update map. So I'm just going to put um, nothing in here so it doesn't do anything, and you'll see what happens as we run this. So you can see it's it's smoothly scrolling the screen all the way across. When it gets to the end, it's going to break because now our offset is going into a position where it shouldn't be doing it. But the first 40, 40 columns is perfectly fine. Uh, except we're not drawing that column down the side, so that's going to be our next job is to draw this column down the side. Uh, all the knops is just to cause a delay. Yes, the knops are... These knops are, are, are there to deliberately kind of... Well, these ones are here to hold the processor in a cycle of just calling knops so that we can guarantee that no instruction is taking longer than two, sec uh, two cycles to execute. So that when this IQ is called, we're only either zero or one cycle off uh, it being stable. And then these knobs are here so that we can perfectly time uh, to cycle, cycle accuracy where we want to call our routine that does the trick. Yeah, I don't like Python at all. I'm realizing very quickly though, I am going to have to learn to, to like it a bit more, so... If you do this for a shift of one column, I'm going to see you can take advantage of smooth scrolling. But if you shift by two columns, I don't understand how smooth scrolling is helping. Um, well, we're, with this, what you can do is you can set a speed of say um, 27, and it will it will shift the entire screen uh, across by uh, three characters, and then smooth scroll it by three as well. So you you can you can still smooth scroll in the gaps between. You don't have to do uh, eight at a time or... Uh, that matches just exclamation mark colon. So exclamation mark minus is just a blank label. Um, so it will look for the, the last blank label. Um, skip would have to have skip minus as well. Yeah, I don't like Python, but I, I realize I'm going to have to learn it because I want to do some AI stuff, and Python does tend to have the best AI libraries at the moment for Tensor and stuff, so TensorFlow, I think, is mainly Python. Um, okay, so so we've got smooth scrolling, but we don't have a column updating, so this is because we need to, we need to do this update map thing here. So, update map. Let me bring that up because again I've written all of these ahead of time, so um, makes it a bit easier. So uh, okay, so update map needs to do a couple of things. The first thing it needs to do is it needs to check um, if the offset is at forty, because if the offset has got to forty, then we then we're at that position um, like I showed you here. When the screen gets all the way across, so we're going up through the offsets here. When it gets to offset 40, watch what happens. It just goes mental. There we go. We've got all this garbage. And that's because now the um, the DMA is happening at a really weird time. Um, and all our all our values are wrong. Um, where am I from? I'm from... I'm from East Anglia originally, but I lived in Manchester for most of my life. So I've got kind of a northern accent. But I, I live in London now, so... Um, it's fading slowly, but not not, not quick enough, really. <clears throat> so if it's less than 40, we can we can go ahead and, and not do anything else. We can just do our normal map update. However, if it is 40, we need to do a full copy. Um, I'm just going to put a blank function in here for now, so it does nothing. Um, but full copy basically means what we need to do at the 40th position is we now need to draw an entire new section of the map and all the colors as well but there's we can use double buffering to do most of that and the colors is quite easy as well um yeah detected the northern bit in there but a slight southern accent yeah i've been down south for uh, what, 15 years now so so it's kind of going um but i definitely have the northern accent still there um so 
when we do the full copy, we'll go and do it here, and then the offset will get reset back to zero again. Um, and we start again. So now what will happen when I do this? And I pronounce my use properly. Uh, what was it? Give me a word. Give me a word to pronounce. You can see when it gets to the end now, it's the offset gets reset to zero and the whole screen flicks back again. So at this point, we need to do a full copy, which means we, we'll need to get the next section of the map and put it in the right place. But as we build the columns, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Aluminium. Aluminium. Nothing. Yeah. Ha uh ha, -huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's with Fs, by the way. It's like this. <clears throat> so the trick that we're going to do is we're going to actually, as we write the columns down one side, new columns, we're also going to be copying them columns into a new buffer. So we're going to use two screens to do this. Oh, you're a Doncaster lad. Okay. Uh, let me bring up my thing again to remind myself. Okay, so in order to do this, we need to create uh, we need to create two loops depending on the buffer. So for now, we'll just do it for one, um, and then we'll copy it over into a new buffer in a minute. Now I'm going to use a, a kick unrolled loop here because it's just easier. Um, and, and gives us speed. It really doesn't matter. I mean, you could probably do this without this and, and it would still be more than fast enough. I just find this the easiest way to do it. Um, so what we need to do, um, we need to load a value from the map and the map goes uh, a full 256 bytes across. So depending on the row, this is the row number, we want the position of the map plus the row number times 256 and we need an offset into that so we're going to have that offset as x and that offset here is going to be a combination of two things so first of all we're going to transfer the offset that we've got so we've got our original we've got our screen offset the value goes from 0 to 39 uh, so we're going to transfer that into the accumulator and then i'm going to add our map position to it and I'm also going to add 39 to it. I'll explain that now. So map position is our actual um, base map position. Um, so this is going to start at zero. And every time we get to the end of the screen, it's going to add 40. Um, and so our actual position is going to be map position plus offset. And that's going to be where we are, where you're actually seeing the map drawn at that point. Um, so I'm going to set that to zero here as well. Uh, yep, there we go. And so now the accumulator contains our position. So if we scroll by one, we are, are the position we actually want to pull from the map is position 40 on the map. So that's who it's. So we add 39, which gives us the, the, the 40 plus map position, which is how many screens across we are. Um, and that gives us our X value here. So we'll transfer that back to the X register. So now we've got a value from the map, um, which needs to go into the right place. And now what we need to do is we need to store it in the screen location. So our screen is at 4,000. Um, and we want to store this at um, whatever row. So I times 28 gives us our rows on, on, the, on the screen. But we need to do minus one. And the reason we need to do minus one is because if we scroll by one across, our offset is now one, but where we actually want to draw it on the screen is column zero, because that's this that's the uh, that's the column that has been wrapped around to the other side. So we do a minus one here. Um, and we need to do another index here because the column that we need to draw to depends on our offset. So we're also going to do here transfer accumulator to Y. So now the Y register contains our offset, our X register contains our map position offset. We're not quite done, uh, and I'll explain why. If I just, In fact, if I show you that now, you'll see what's wrong with it.
So it is drawing the new section of the map, but as you can see, it's drawing it one too high. And this is because as the VSP happens, it's actually shifting up by one. So what we need to do is we need to draw one row lower than before. So we do that now, we should get the, get the next row. And now we're getting everything drawn at the correct row here. The colors are wrong, but we're, we, we are actually drawing at the correct row. We get the jitter back down again because we're not doing a full copy. So once it's drawn two widths worth of screen, uh, it's going to jitter back down to the bottom again. But we're actually getting it um, scrolling up properly now. Um, then what we need to do um, is we need to do the same with colors as well. So we will do another loop. And this time we will load this value from here. So the value that we've just drawn to the screen uh, with Y again, we'll transact value to X. We will look up a color in our colors table and we will store it at the same address as we've got, but in color RAM. So like so. And now we should have the colors correct as well as we go. And you can see we've got colors correct up here. Everything's fine. And catch up on the chat, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, uh, just talk of the north. <laughs> I'm a mod, no one can silence us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does fall down. The reason it falls down is because um, we're only doing one screen's worth and then it's actually resetting the offset. So uh, overscan at the bottom looks a bit flickery. Uh, see what you mean by that. Oh, this bit here. This is showing how, how long it's actually taking to do this scroll. So traditionally, when you do a, a scroll with this amount of data, uh, data even without the colors this would be two-thirds of the screen we're using you know less than less than five percent of the screen here um, so this is this is much faster this is like 15 times faster than doing a normal thing and it allows you to scroll color as well which is good okay let me put some comments in here so I can explain what's going on so this is map column copy uh, Copy next column from the map to relevant column on screen, back one char and down one char, uh, and then set column colors. There we go. So this is already kind of doing a lot of the work but unfortunately this is going to break when we get to the next screen because we need to do a full copy so the way we do this is we have two buffers so as we're copying the data from the map to the screen we can also copy it uh, also to other buffer so at the same time as we're storing it on the screen we can store it to the other screen this time we don't need to go down one line because this is this is not a, a VSP scrolled screen. This is a, a completely fresh screen. Uh, we do, however, need to be back one character again, uh, like so. We don't need to do anything with the color. The colors are stored in here already. I'll show you how we do the color scroll in a minute. Um, miss that. Let me go and check my thing. Thank you for the follow, Krillo97. Welcome to the stream. Oh, and thank you for the follow, Armadillo Farm. I missed that as well. Welcome to the stream, guys. So now, as this screen is, is being shifted across, the new data that's being added onto the end is also being filled up in a new buffer. So what that means is when we get to the full copy routine here, we can actually switch the buffers over. So if I do a buffer swap here, so if I... Right, first thing I need to do is create a variable called buffer here. This is gonna hold zero or one, depending on which, which buffer we're currently using. So there's always gonna be a front buffer and a back buffer, and they're gonna switch over as we go along. Thank you for the follow, A. Bridgewater. Very much appreciated. 
So we're going to start with a buffer of zero, which is at 4000 in memory, and we're going to switch to a buffer of 4400 when we get to the edge of the screen, uh, which will be zero, 01. And that's going to happen when we do full copy. So it's at this point here, what we're going to do, we're going to take the value in buffer. Uh, we're going to EOR it with one because it's if we want it to be one if it's already zero and we want it to be zero if it's already one. So EORing a value um, with zero one will toggle between zero and one. Um, and then what we're going to do, we're going to uh, we need this to be screen RAM, uh, so we're going to shift it to the left four times, so it becomes the upper nibble, uh, and then we're going to OR with O2, which is going to set our character set back, and then we're going to store on D018. Seems like a lot, but bear with me, you'll see what it's done. So, as we... Actually, it's not doing the right thing. That's fine, I think I just need to do a bit more code around it first. Um, so basically what this is doing uh, is swap screen buffers and set uh, screen RAM again. And so now what we need to do is in here um, we need to we need to actually check our buffer and if it's zero we go to buffer one otherwise we go to buffer two this is buffer one again you could probably write this so it's it's much neater um, rather than having two sets of unrolled loops like this there's probably a neater way of doing it and all buffer two is going to do is exactly the same as buffer one, um, but with these screens switched around. So instead of being four zero four four, it's going to be four 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 zero. And instead of four zero here, it's going to be four four. And now we should get a little bit further when we get to the end. There's still be, uh, yeah, still a color problem here. And also the map offset is wrong. So it's just scrolling the same block because we're not advancing the map. All we're doing is we're resetting the, the uh, uh, we're resetting the offset back to zero. So what we need to do is in our full copy here, we also need to get the value in map pos. Add 40 to it. go and so that means when this is calculated now and we start grabbing from the map it's actually going to advance all the way through the map now so we still don't have the colors right but we've now got um we should now have a map that actually scrolls towards the end now we'll still get some junk down here because there is going to still be some color problems down here um which i'll show we get around there's still color problems up here because we're not doing a color copy the full copy should be doing a color copy and this is screwing up here for some reason. I'll fix this in a second. I'm not sure why that's doing it. But you can see we're getting closer and closer to, to filling this out now. Um, okay, so what's our next job? Let's have a look. So what have I not got in place? Uh, jump to a full copy. Yes, full copy is this thing here. Uh, this increments base map position. Um, gonna get some sleep, happy streaming. Thanks, Endrick. I'm sure you've gone by now, but thank you anyway. Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, okay, that's fine. Oh, one thing we do need to do as well is when you first start this, um, obviously the first the first column hasn't been drawn yet, so you do need to, uh, at the very beginning of the program, which is something I've worked out with before, uh, you do have to call an update map here as well. Just to make sure that the first column is actually in place properly. Oh, that's completely wrong. Maybe you don't do that there. 
Oh, I don't know why. It needs to be after we set the variables because otherwise our offsets and map positions are all wrong. Um, initialize map. There we go. Right, let's see where we are with that now. We're getting pretty close. I think all we need to do now is the color ram shift. Um, as you can see, when, when the new screen kicks in, the color ram screws up massively. And then that is looking pretty good. There was a weird, yeah, this thing, I'm not sure why that's doing that. It's like the second screen kind of going weird at that point for some reason. But the VSP has stopped working. Let's have a look. What am I doing differently up here? Oh, one thing we should do um, with our stable IRQ here is align it because we don't want this to start taking um, uh, doing a branch over a page boundary so we, we should align uh, this stable IRQ here uh, this one doesn't matter because it doesn't need to be stable but this one definitely needs to be stable so that could actually be causing that problem in fact what I'm gonna do I'm gonna change the speed now now we've got it kind of working I'm uh, going to up the speed. And up it to three. It should be enough for now. So you can still see the colours are wrong. Um, okay, we're still getting this weird jankiness here. I'll figure out what that is in a minute. Um, so, copying initial screen, updating the scroll. That's correct. I'm just checking against the code I did earlier today. Uh, I need that. Show screen update map. Yep. So our update map should be doing an offset, which it is. Uh, comparing it, doing a full copy. Otherwise, it's coming here. This is doing what I would expect. Correct. Uh, columns. Four 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 zero. Yep. Everything looks good there. Um, why is it doing that weird jankiness? I wonder. Anybody can figure that out. Um, I'm not on blue bits, so I'm so it's going to be awkward. Uh, okay, let's let's do the color ram shift, and then we can we can work out the rest. So, so the, the final thing we need to do is we need to shift the color ram. Now, the thing to remember is all we've done is copied. A new screen data into a new buffer and at the same time we've been updating the color ram with the new columns as we've gone along so the color ram is actually almost correct it's just shift down one line because we always we, we had to draw everything one line down because it, it had moved up because of the VSP so all we actually have to do is shift the color ram back up the screen by one row so there's a multitude of ways of doing this um, I'm gonna do it a uh, really really simple uh, way uh, I've already got it here as well I'm just going to copy paste it and then explain it it'll be easier uh, yeah I'm just going to do it like that really is that how I did it fair enough okay super simple it's easier than I thought actually I just did an unruled, rule, uh, unrolled loop like this but actually I'm Oh no, I've got a better one here. Ah, oh, right, okay. I was going to say, I must have been mixed. Uh, okay, I was experimenting with the colour. I'll explain why. So this is what I ended up with, an unrolled one. Uh, and the reason being was because I had this originally. Uh, and what this, this is unrolled, but this is going from left to right, uh, column by column. Sorry, from right to left, column by column. Um, it's less code than this. But unfortunately, this has a problem, um, which I will show you in a second. Uh, so I need that, you know, like that. Uh, as well as, as well as drawing uh, column by column. Shoot, this is all this is doing is taking the color on the row below, copying it to the, the the row above, and it's doing that down an entire column. Then it's moving to the next column, and then when it's finished, um, when it's finished a column, it draws a black one in the bottom as well. 
couldn't you just pad the color ramp? So one thing you can do actually, uh, and this is this is what I would suggest if you want to do um, this, and you'll see actually when this runs why this is a problem. Um, so you should see a big flash of white, and this this flash of white is the color ramp uh, being copied. Ignore this jankiness. I don't know what's going on here. We'll fix that in a minute. Um, it kind of fixes itself after a while, which is weird. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense why that's doing that. Um, but you see this big flash of white it comes all the way down to here. So this is the full copy. So this is how how long the, the scroll is actually taking. But once every forty characters width, every screen width takes quite a long time it comes down to here so it takes like about half of the raster time to do it now because it's doing alternate uh, because it's just copying rows down if you look at what you actually need to do so if you imagine uh, these are the colors I'll do RGB right so this is if you imagine a screen with made of tiles and a two by two tiles and each tile has a color this is what the screen should be, and this is what the screen looks like after VSP. Um, so you can see we need to shift everything up by one, right? But if we use tiles like this, actually all you need to do is shift one character up one so I need to move so if I look at this if I just move this it alternate lines up by one so I'm going to move this out up to the top and then I'm going to leave the next line as it is and then I'm going to move the next alternate line up by one I'll leave the next line as it is move the next alternate line up by one and leave the next line as it is so you can see if you do things with tiles and tile colors you only have to move alternate lines so you can half the half the amount of time it takes to do this by doing that so i definitely recommend using uh, per color tiles uh, per tile colors because uh, it will help a lot with with that section because uh, it can you know, as you can see it can take up quite a lot of time to do that uh, i don't know why that timing has gone all weird there now I'm not sure what's going on let's see if it's to do with this maybe there is a weird jitter thing going on because it seems like the VSP timing goes way out for some reason at some point yeah it definitely goes out I'm gonna leave the jitter in um, and I'm just gonna go through the routines I've got here to make sure I've got everything spot on uh, buffers, yep. <laughs> Lifting color abs, so I just explained that. Um, our rasters should be fine. Um, in fact, oh no, let's just, just read through it, it's easier. Okay, let me check the, let me check the actual raster. Uh, we've got because it seems like the rest timing is kind of screwed up for some reason so this is our IRQ entry let me check my IRQ entry up in here and just double check I've done everything the same so that looks fine uh, I've got a little bit of a difference there but that shouldn't be a problem uh, yeah that's fine that's the same that's the same wait some cycles to here do all this crap yep that's the same uh, I mean that's pretty much the same yeah uh -uh. I'm not seeing anything different in here actually not sure why it's behaving differently it's to do with the stuff yeah that's fine also seems to be fine. Hmm. Yeah, it should be flicking between buffers. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna run it in the um gonna run it in the debug and just make sure that it is running correctly between buffers. So if I maybe it's skipping one of the buffer 
update. So four, four. We should see it toggle like this. And it is toggling, but then it kind of breaks at some point. And I can't tell you why it's breaking. It's almost certainly going to be a timing issue. So one, one issue we have got is um, you'll see a little kind of glitch as it gets to the end. Because of the colour RAM is taken to the bat here, um, it means it's missing that the RAS that triggers here. Um, I'm going to see what happens if I took... No, because it was still happening without the colour RAM as well, so... I don't think it's that. I don't see what would be causing this. It's strange. Uh... This is the only problem with VSP. It takes some insane kind of <laughs> timing wizardry to get it right. And a lot of the time you are just messing around with, with little values here and there until you until you get it spot on. I mean, it could even be something as simple as not enough knops here as well. I mean, I'm going to put a few extra in just in case. Um, it could be any anything that causes it. Still that though. Okay, so that's not that. Uh, don't think it's this. This is never going to overflow. I'm going to put zero in there just in case. I think it could be our overflow flag that's for some reason tripping differently on a different line. Yep, there you go. That was it. So basically, uh, this. This was not working correctly because sometimes the overflow was set. Um, the overflow should only be, be being set by uh, bit 00, zero, but for some reason, value in 02, which is our offset, was for some reason hitting um, hitting bit 6, which it shouldn't have been doing. So I'm just going to put bit 0 in there. We can also fix this by doing, um, if we take two cycles off, and put a clear overflow flag there. Uh, actually, do it uh, here. So now the overflow flag is definitely going to be clear. It doesn't matter what we do here. So if I put zero two back in here, but now I need to take two cycles off. So, so this is taking uh, forty one plus three, so forty four. I need to take two off. So this needs to be forty two. Uh, so I'm going to make this. 7 so that becomes 36 and then I'm gonna do three knops here instead I can get rid of that bit O2 and clear the overflow flag here let's just make sure that works down there and there we go so the only problem we've got here now is that when the, when the full screen copy happens as you can see the raster comes down to about here and the FL, uh, I keep calling it FLD, the VSP needs to happen around here. So at that point, it's going to miss, it's going to skip one frame as it gets to there because of that, because it's happening in a, in a raster IO key. So we can change that. Uh, oh, and you can also see the color glitch here because we're, because we're updating across the screen rather than down the screen. There's a bit of a color glitch there. Um, so let's have a go at trying to fix those issues. Um, and then I'll put some, uh, oh, and there's a, you'll see uh, some junk down here. So what's happening is when we get to the end of the map, even though we're at the end of the map, the offset is pointing to a value that's greater than 256. And so it draws into the first two buffers of the new map. It draws some junk into the bottom of the, the screen. Now, normally what you do is when you get to 256 on the map, you'd stop and you wouldn't be able to go any further. Um, it's just because of the the way I've got the data set up. It's not it's not a huge problem. The bigger problem here is that the uh, the the color RAM change is happening during the screen update here, uh, which is stopping the VSP from happening, and it's causing a little bit of a color glitch up here, which you can just about see as it it goes through. Um, so what we can do is we can shift that color um, color RAM copy around a little bit. Uh, so this was what I had. I think this is what I was doing at the before the um, before I gave up and just went off to do something else. Um, so I'm going to change it to do this instead. Uh, I'm going to keep 
I'm going to keep that bottom row because we still need to color that bottom row black for now. I'll show you a trick that you can do instead in a minute. Um, but for now, we'll color that bottom row black. Um, and this is going to change where the color RAM is updated. So hopefully you won't see it flicker at the top anymore. And that's because the color RAM starts updating here. Um, oh, it is still flickering a little bit. Um, but it's drawing down the screen this time instead of... Uh, is it still flickering? That's weird. It shouldn't be doing. It's drawing from the top down, so... Odd. Weird position that it's doing it at for some reason. Right again. Yeah, there is a still a slight flicker as it does that. Uh, uh, not to worry. What I'm going to show you is how to get rid of this junk down here first. So let's do that. So this bottom row you can't use at all. So what you can do is at the beginning of... Um, beginning of our IRQ which is down here this one here if we just set that back one line and then in here we just wait for the next line um, so I'm just gonna do French of equal so this will wait for the next line it doesn't have to be stable this is going to be stable enough to do it uh, to do what I want to do now I'm going to load the value 7b and I'm going to store that in d011 and what that's going to do is it's going to set an invalid VIC mode on the chip so if you look at this um, basically that's going to try and set uh, what would it be 7b so this would be extended background mode and bitmap mode uh, and, and the screen on but you can't have both of those things at the same time so it's going to cause it to just draw a border in that location um, and then what you need to do is set it back at the top up here so when uh, when we enter this one here we can just restore it back to 1b and so all that that will do is it will draw a black band across the bottom of the screen so when we get to the end we shouldn't see um, we shouldn't see that junk anymore. Let's see it's hidden it now. So so we got rid of that, that junk at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, basically when whenever you do this you can basically count the bottom row as kind of um, unnecessary really as as a well not unnecessary as a unusable um, this is one way to do it. I prefer the color method because you can then you can still stick sprites over the top of it. Then this will hide sprites. Um, uh, so, but normally you would stop the the map when it gets to the end. Uh, so if we were to do, uh, I'm really annoyed by that color ram. It's it's bugging me. So one thing we could do, actually, is if we... So we, all we need to do is shift the color ram, right? Uh, it doesn't matter when it happens, as long as it starts happening at, at the right point. Um, it doesn't have to be in a raster. So what we can do is we can set a flag up here. Uh, shift color now. And then in our loop here, we can do uh, shift color now, uh, branch, if it's still zero, we'll just go back and loop. Otherwise, uh, zero in shift color now, jump to shift color ram, and then jump to loop. So we're gonna set a flag basically, so instead of Instead of calling this in a raster, we'll just call it when we need it to happen. Uh, we'll set the flag when we need it to happen, uh, which is in full copy wherever it's gone. 
and then it won't be called in the uh, raster anymore. It'll be called outside out, which means the VSP can still work um, on those lines. Uh, swap buffer set screen, so here. So n normally we're doing this shift color around, but if we get rid of that now and make that happen inside um, the main game loop instead of the raster loop, it, get, it will get rid of the um, we, we, we don't see the color RAM uh, border thing anymore because it's not happening in the raster but what it does mean is that the VSP is not going to get interrupted um, by anything. Oh, we are seeing some color glitches though as we go through which is probably a result of it happening at the wrong time there. <laughs> Typical. Uh... Okay, but they're fairly minor things. Um... Again, this you would solve this problem mostly by doing alternate lines. So instead of, as I say, if you set your, your tiles up to do uh, two by two with uh, well, to any any value doesn't really matter, just more, more than kind of one high uh, that share a color. Two by two is best because you get a lot of detail uh, detail in that. Um, and it's kind of it's a good balance between detail and memory. Uh, then you only have to do alternate lines. So if I did alternate lines here, I mean obviously it's not going to work because the colours aren't set up like that in here, but I can show you the difference in uh, performance. Uh, where's the colour RAM? Actually, have colour RAM here. Um, so get rid of that. So if we were doing it like this, instead you'd do uh, be copying from one row down to one row up and then you do plus equals two like that and now you're taking half as much time to do your color am uh, but you're, you're going to get color issues because only every alternate line is going to be correct at the moment which is fine when um which is fine when you've got the tile set up for it but when they're not set up obviously you're going to get these weird issues um, and in terms of performance Oops. I don't know why my chat's gone all the way down there. There we go. Yeah, so you can see now the the raster's up here. It's still, it's not even in the, not even reaching the game anymore. So it's a really good idea to to set if you're going to use VSP to set your colors up like that. So you have, um, so you only have to cop shift every alternate row up. Um, it will it will save you all the little glitches and things that you're, you're seeing on this. Um, I'm not going to spend much time messing around trying to fix these glitches though. I'll leave that as an exercise for, for you guys if you want to want to play around with that. Uh, but basically, the the color glitches we're seeing is because of this the way this routine works. It's copying across the screen, or well, actually backwards from from right to left, um, column by column. So at some point, the the screen starts rasterizing the colors while it's still trying to update them so there's uh there's some problems there everyone is too busy paying attention to chat yeah not to worry not to worry okay i'll tell you what i'm gonna do uh i'm gonna take a quick break then when i come back we'll we'll add some joystick control so we can control the speed so you can see just how quick you can move it across um and then uh if you provide your original code, I can fix the current one. Actually, yeah, let me let me load in the original code that I did in here. You'll see it's almost identical to this. So, uh, but I think I was messing around with it though at some point, so it might be might be broken again. Uh, I'll just call this test for now. I can't remember what I was doing with this, but this had joystick control in it as well, so. Oh yeah, I was messing with Mayhem in Monsterland, which is why the colours are wrong and why there's a weird flicker going on as well. I wasn't quite sure what it was. And I had some characters. Oh, actually, let me show you what I had. So I was in the middle of doing uh, a Be Right Back screen. Uh... So I was messing with the Mayhem in Monsterland characters, but there is a flicker at some point. There's a way you see the flicker. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but. Um... Yeah, it had had that with some parallax in the background as well. Um, 
fact, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave that on while I go for uh, a quick break uh, for you to have a glance at. There are issues with it, obviously. Um, I was messing with it just before stream. I wanted to, to get it right. But um, yeah, all right. I'll be back in uh, five minutes, guys. Yeah, I don't know why it was flickering at all um, on that. That's what I was looking at before, um, well, half an hour or so, an hour before the stream. Um, that's really about it for, for that effect. That's pretty much all it is. Uh, the difference with Mayhem is that it goes in both directions. So the trick there is what you need to do is when, when your screen offset, so when you're in the first 20 columns, you don't do anything. You, you've got the previous screen already in buffer. If you haven't already got the previous screen in buffer, you need to be building the screen that's on the left in the buffer. If you're in offsets 21 to 39, you need to be building the screen that goes on the right side. And that means when you, when you scroll in either direction, you've got the correct, you're either scrolling back through data you've already got um, on screen basically, um, or you're moving into the next buffer if you go in the in uh, if you reach the far side of that screen. So that's how they managed to do it in both directions. Um, and the, the beauty of it is you can spread it spread those copies out over a number of frames. So like uh, even at the speed mayhem's going, on, and I don't think it's going all that fast. Um, I mean, if we look at if we look at this, which does have some bugs in it. This is the second one so the three four five six seven i don't think it's going much faster than that and that still gives you 20 frames 21 frames to work out what the next buffer is going to be if you depend on which direction you're going in um you've got 40 frames at that speed if you're just going in one direction you've got 20 frames if you're going in both directions um Actually, let's see if we can fix this one. Let's let's have a look. What's the problems on it? Let's spend a bit of time fixing this. Uh, let me get this screen size down a bit. I don't like it that big. Okay, so oh, our color shift is now doing. Uh, let's reverse that color shift again. Right, so that's that's the proper color shift. So we're shifting one too many rows there. We only need to shift. Oh no, that's right. That's the right number of rows, sorry. But there is there is some colour problems there. Like all these are green to begin with and they shouldn't be green. Why is it suddenly doing that? Uh, shift colour RAM color now only on a full copy and shift color RAM shouldn't be being set at the beginning oh we need to set shift color now to zero as well so there we go so the colors are correct mostly but there is a point at which it kind of gets the incorrect color for some reason um, it seems to just be at the edges of the screen, so let's see if we can, yeah, there's one there, one there. One there as well. Um, let's add some joystick control in, so let's steal the joystick control from this one. So I put a, a max speed value in and a timer. I'm going to grab those two things, put them into our routine. Uh, don't need that. We do need the timer. The first high bite. First high bite. Yeah, I, I, let's have a look. What am I? The color copy should be correct. Uh, let me put the joystick control in and then and then we can slow it down and speed it up and stuff so uh, that was really simple uh, it was 
this chunk here. So I just took these controls. I'll explain these very quickly as well. Um, so after all our shift stuff here, I just stick these controls in. All these do uh, it's increments the timer. Then every fourth frame, um, every fourth frame it will perform this here, which grabs the value from the joystick and starts shifting bits off. Uh, when it gets to the left bit it shifts it off if it's if the left bit is set then it doesn't need to go left if it is set then it, it just decreases the speed making sure it doesn't um, go below zero and then it shifts the right bit off and does the same again but with a max speed as well so that should now give us joystick control so yeah I can slow it right down so let's slow it down to one and see what happens Let's pause it when we get to a wrong byte. So this byte here is wrong. So it's... I think what it might be trying to do is trying to draw this column as it's shifting the colours up. I think that's what's happening here. Because that colour there is being shifted up from here, I believe. Um, and I think it's just because it's actually drawing that column as it's shifting the colours up as well. One way you can get around this, I'm going to do this now actually, is um, if you just reserve a bit of space uh, and just call it a uh, color RAM copy or something like that. Actually, I'm not even going to give it a name. I've got the address for it. That's fine. I'm just going to fill it um, with zeros for now. And what you can do is in the in here uh, when you store these colors you can actually store them instead in uh, this location as well so in the same way we were, we're copying the uh, the color to the the other buffer we can do the same uh, sorry copying the character to the other buffer we can do the same with the colors here and this is probably slightly better if you want to do um, dual direction scrolling as well because it takes the kind of complication out of the, the colors um, and then when you do the color copy uh, which is shift color ram when you do the color ram copy here uh, you can just do this instead and now it's not shifting colors it's actually copying the colors from the from from one screen <laughs> Is this char? Yeah, this is char set. This isn't. Um, this isn't bitmap. This is the other cool thing about this uh, technique is it's really good for scrolling bitmaps as well, um, because obviously bitmap data is very hard to to scroll. Um, there you go. We're still getting that color glitch there, but we'll have a look at that in a second. Um, yeah, you can you can scroll in a, a full bitmap as well like this. Um, and in fact, that's how this effect was first introduced. Um, I can't remember the name of the group uh, that introduced it. It might be Nikari, actually. Let me have a look. C64 VSP. Be, I can remember what the demo looks like, so if I can find the video. Yeah, meme team, okay. Where's that gone? Yeah, so this was the first kind of BSP. I think it was the first, anyway. Um, and yeah, they they were scrolling a bitmap across the screen. And so you can imagine in 1987, this was kind of quite amazing that they could do this this amount of um, uh, color shifting in that way. Because this would be very hard to to shift any other way. Um, now you'll notice that they're they're not they're only scrolling one screen across and then back again, so they're not having to do a full screen copy. They're just literally they're just using the VSP to push the screen all the way to one side. Um, yeah, two two raster lines. Yeah, exactly. They they're doing this. 
because they're not having to copy any data they're literally just shifting everything across so um, they can do it very very quickly indeed so anyway there we go that's that's where it came from originally uh, okay so I think this color ram is happening um, at the wrong time and I think it's happening at the wrong time because it's happening during full copy full copy is happening as part of the update map which is here and what's happening is is the map is updating and then it's doing this 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 stuff here ideally what it should be doing um, is not doing any of this so if we just put an RTS here actually if we do it uh, here I think we should get uh, something working thanks Joe Stein 6581 good good number good choice oh, I am an 8580 fan myself but um, I think this is gonna oh no so now we've got an, we've now we've got a new glitch here because it's not drawing the new column um, properly Uh, so I think it, I, I honestly think it's to do with this um, this full copy happening, which means that the colours are happening at the wrong time. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of these again. I'm gonna try and fix this before I end the stream. I'm gonna do this till just after twelve, I think. Um, I've got quite a busy day tomorrow, so I've got to be careful. I don't end up too tired. Uh, and let's restore our color copy again so this one here uh, thank you for the bits cheers wicked appreciate it dude go towards my wine on saturday i oh, just a reminder guys as well saturday is going to be my last stream for about two or three weeks um my last commodore stream anyway so we're going to do the um the absorb animation for the enemies we're actually going to get that implemented put some uh, actual states for those enemies in so they can actually be absorbed um, and we start getting very close to a, a actually playable game um, and then I'm going to be off on the following Thursday I've got to do some stuff around the house uh, I've got to rearrange this room I've got uh, deliveries coming and stuff so I'm not I'm going to be too busy on Thursday to do anything Saturday I'm going to be building this thing once and for all finally um, and then the week after I'm in Finland so I may do a stream on the Monday um, so not not this Monday a week on Monday I may do a stream uh, just to test this new machine out I might play some uh, some modern PC games um, I'm thinking probably Star Wars Jedi all in order or whatever it's called uh, maybe some Battlefield as well I'm not sure yet um, and then I will be back probably round about Christmas actually um, so it, there is going to be Christmas as well so I'm imagining I'm not going to be streaming much over Christmas so it's probably going to be about three weeks um, three weeks break I think so I do apologize to everybody looking forward to more um, game dev streams but what's your Christmas takes over um right okay let's have a look so i believe this is just happening while while this stuff is happening um so maybe what we need to do we need to set a flag so we're setting a flag in here and then what we can do is before we exit so where's update map call from update map is called here so what we can do is we can uh, shift color now uh, compare with one if it's not one uh, call this no shift oops uh, if it is one we'll just increment it one more and then we'll set this loop to only activate when it's actually set to uh, two rather than non-zero. Uh, so we'll compare this to O2. Now this will only happen after all the shifts are done. 
So this might actually fix our problems. No, we've still seen a color glitch in there. I mean, that's this is definitely where we should be doing it, but now we're still seeing a color glitch, which bothers me a little bit. Thank you for the bits, I'm up. Oh, a thousand. Wow, thank you very much. You've definitely paid for the wine this weekend. Definitely paid for the wine this weekend. Thank you very much. I'm up. very much appreciated. Yeah, no problem. I, I will put this onto GitHub when I'm done. Um, feel free to debug it as well. If I, if I haven't figured out what this is by the end, then feel free to figure out what the problem is and, uh, and let me know if you do work it out. Um, I will be... I will make it available straight after the stream, actually. Um, but yeah, very much appreciated. Thank you, Amok. I wish I had a, a better alert system for that. Maybe I'll make some nice little demo alerts or something. I've definitely got enough of a back catalogue of stuff to uh, make some little kind of demo alert videos now. So interestingly, the, the effect here, the first time I did VSP was, um, was the reason para I started doing Parasol Stars. So I wanted to... I'd read about VSP, I was looking into how Mayhem did it scrolling um, and I was really impressed with, with how they'd done it. I knew they'd used a trick to do it uh, back in the day but I didn't know enough about the Vic and enough about the C64 to really understand it back then. Um, so when I got back into the scene a couple of years ago I looked into VSP trick in particular. Well, I looked into Mayhem and found out it was the VSP trick and then I tried to make my own VSP scroller and I chose the Rainbow Islands artwork for it. And um, I managed to get a Rainbow Islands level kind of horizontally scrolling, and it looked um, it looked really cool. So I thought, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually try and make a game out of this. And I, I realised I'd played um, PC Engine a couple of weeks before, and I'd played uh, Parasol Stars on that uh, on an emulator, and realised that actually there's a lot of stuff in that, especially in the first world, that is just lifted from Rainbow Islands and with a bit of work I managed to shift everything round and make uh, make Parasol Stars um, and VSP was going to be what was used for the second level onwards where the, where the screens can scroll left and right and the beauty of it was is that um, in Rainbow in Parasol Stars the screens are only ever two screens wide so I'd never have to do a full copy there'd be none of this colour ram shifting it would only be a left and right scroller Seems to travel left with every full transition across the map. Okay. So it's on that one there. Now let's have a look where it is when it comes back round again. It can speed up to the end. Oh, you're right. It's it, and it travels left an undefined amount as well. It's so that this one here. It's half green on that purple bit here, so this could be to do with the uh, the the kind of length of the map as well, because the screen is 40 wide, but the map is um, the map is 256 wide. See, that one's fine there, or is it that one? It's that one, wasn't it? And it seems fine this time around. It seems to move down into different places. Which, which makes me think it's the color ram copy. There's something going wrong with the color ram copy somewhere. Um, and I'm not sure why. Well, let's try. Let's try a few different ways of copying the color ram. Maybe we can figure out um, a different way of doing it. Uh. Okay, so this was one method I had. I think, did I keep all my... I bet I didn't keep my other methods. I tried a few different ways of doing this. Uh, this was this was completely unrolled, which was obviously the quickest, but obviously in terms of memory, you can see here, uh, it's taken up quite a bit of memory. It's taken up like 8K of memory almost. So this, is, this isn't a good way of doing it. Um, but we can probably use this unrolling to test out a few theories with it. So... Let's try doing it row by row, but only going... So let's, let's just get rid of all of this for now. Let's try row by row. So we're going to do uh, one row at a time. So we'll, we'll call it R, or we'll call it row. And we only need to copy... Uh, 
Hang on, 20... Oh no, we do need to do all those, okay. And then we'll do column as well here. Oh, I don't need to do... Do I need to do a dot? I thought I did need to do a dot here. Uh, right, there we go. Column equals zero. Column less than 39. Because we don't need to do that last column, so I wonder if it's something to do with that. Now if we load D8 to 8 plus row times 28 plus column. Store that at D eight hundred. Just row times column. Thanks for the host, Akmafin, and good night, Amak. Uh, no problem. As I say, the code will be up on on GitHub shortly after this. I'll drop a link in Discord. Um, I I can't stay up much later either, to be honest. I've got a fairly busy day tomorrow, but it's it's gonna potentially end up being um, a painful day if I'm not careful. It's that last column. That's it. That's solved the issue. Yep, that's solved the issue. Cool, there you go. Well, I'm gonna... I'm gonna leave um, that code in there. I'm gonna put a little comment above it. Um, fast... Put memory intensive. And I'm going to put a note up here. Do not copy column 39 or glitch. And let's see if we can come up with a better way of doing this. So ideally we need to cut, we need to copy from the top down to the bottom. Um, And we need it to be fairly quick, so let, let's put um, let's put some increments and decrements in here, so we can see where it where it is. So let's let's have a look at um, let's have a look what this is doing. There better be snow when I go there, Aquavira. I'm going to be very disappointed. I'm going to hold you personally responsible if there's no snow. Also, notice none of the colour is glitching up here now. Because we're copying from the top down to the bottom, it's it's not glitching. So, our raster time is round about here, um, which looks to be maybe three character rows down. But that's about as good as we're going to get it. This is copying everything we need it to copy. I think if I do one less row, it's not going to work, because I think it needs to copy... I think that's right. Let me check. It might actually be enough... We'll see when it when it skips to the next row and it comes in. Actually, no, that is fine. Okay, so we've done one less row, so we've got it down to like maybe two two characters into the new screen. Uh, I'm coming on the twelfth uh, twelfth of December. I think last time I was in Helsinki, it was. Oh no, it was January when I came last time. So it was the other side of kind of the winter solstice. Um, and it was quite heavy snow then as well. And we stayed there for your Tide and Rock show. Yep, indeed, that's exactly what I'm going to. <laughs> exactly what I'm going to. I'm looking, really looking forward to it as well. Um, I do like I do like the Finnish rock bands, to be honest. As I've said before, I'm a massive... Massive um, Finland fan. It's kind of my my um, Achilles heel of, of countries, to be honest. Um, okay, so twenty three rows is actually fine. I'm not sure why that's fine, but apparently it is because that would be copying from the twenty third row up one. I, I couldn't tell you why that's why that's right, but it does seem to work. So I'll, I'm going to put it back to 24 because I, I don't trust it because I'm I'm not sure the colours at the bottom are going to be representative of um, lots of different colours. I think they're all the same character colour, which is probably why it looks like it's working. 
So I'm going to leave it at 24 rows because I don't trust that. Um, and let's see if we can find another way of doing it. So we need to copy one row at a time. So let's, let's just copy this up here and blank this out. You only need four rows if you copy 24. Yeah, the problem is that I can't copy the 39th column. I've got to skip the 39th column. So I think what I'm going to do is is kind of what you're saying, but I'm going to do I'm going to do 24 rows um, of copying from zero. Uh, actually, I'll, do, I'll go backwards. So if I start at uh, 38 and then load that one, comma x, store it at that, that one. Comma X. But I think this is going to take a lot of raster time to do, so. <laughs> oh, Bridgewater, that's that's pretty good. I like that. You got competition for jokes there at Kmuffin. Oh, that's a good joke though, so I guess you don't have competition, because your competition is in absolutely terrible jokes. Yeah, so you can see this is taking a lot more time. It's coming down here, um, but it's taking a lot less memory. So we've saved probably about 6K by, by doing it like this instead. Um, so I'm going to put a note in here as well. Slow, but memory friendly. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay, so is the strike still ongoing at the moment? Because I did see uh, the, what you posted about Finair as well. Because we're traveling with Finair, so I kind of, I kind of hope everything's okay. Yeah, I hope everything's okay because I, I really don't want to miss out on that. Really looking forward to it. Reminds me, actually, I do need to put my passport details into the site or else they're not going to let me on. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so this is this is actually working now. This is working. It's, it's not got the glitch at the top like we had before. Uh, disappeared into thin air. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty, pretty good at this, actually. I like it. I want to see actually if I copy that into my uh, my other page that I had up here. Uh, actually, let me just. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, just get my colours out of here. What were they? Uh... <coughs> right, damn it. Uh, 3A9, alright. I just want to see if it works for the, um, for the Mayhem Scroller as well. Because I think it solves all my issues there. <coughs> Whoa, why? <sighs> so it's 3A9, okay. Why do people, why do we sneeze in threes? I don't get it. Yep, that does it solves the flickering and everything. Well, there we go. I've got my new Be Right Back screen. Just need to scroll that character again. Oh, I realise I'm doing this off screen. It's not, not the friendliest way to do it, but... Uh... They scroll... I'm just want to get that working again and save it so it's, it's kind of a nice thing to have uh... wait what have I done here this lot of... oh, I'll do that afterwards I'm gonna save that because I think that's good I can get that work um, I'm trying to think of a faster way of doing this 
I kind of slept. There we go. Time to go check on dinner. Okay, right. Last time I saw the, it was broken. So I think it's working now. Seems to be fine. So we're hiding the glitch at the bottom here by setting the border to on, basically by by using an invalid Vic mode. We're only scrolling color RAM up to the last row because it's because we're actually setting the color RAM here. If we start messing with this row, then we're going to screw things up. So we don't need to set it, and we can't see it anyway because it's off screen. Um, the only problem is, is you would need to make a choice here. So this once every 40 frames or so, um, you're going to get a, a massive hit to your cycle time as it copies the colors. Again, like I say, you could half that to about here um, by uh, doing alternate lines instead, um, which would probably give you plenty of room to do other stuff in it. You could also make sure that, that on those cycles you don't do you just turn off some of the updates. So for instance, if you've got enemy AI, you could just turn it off for a frame, and you're not going to notice that for one frame. Um, or you can sacrifice memory. So if you wanted to sacrifice memory, you could do it do it like this. Um, or you could even do a combination. So if you did, um, if you split the split the screen into tiles of the same color. Um, and only did this over two rows, you're now only using half the memory that you were before for this. I don't know why it's suddenly not compiling. Oh, because I've done row plus two, it should be plus equals two. I've broken the compiler! <laughs> you have to close Sublime now, because I've broken the compiler. Interesting, I'll have to report a bug for that. Okay, let's open a new window. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if I was to do this in a game, I would definitely be doing this with... Oh, the compiler's completely stopped. So the fast way uses about 8k, um, whereas the quick... Well, for all of the code and the and the fast scroll, it uses about uh, 8... Uh, the fast color, color shift, it uses about 8k. The slower way uses around about... 2k but using about 6 extra k by doing that you could probably get that down to 4k or 3k extra um, like I say by doing the tiles with different colors and, and splitting it like that I'm gonna have to find the uh, Java runtime and quit it now because uh, Java 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 where are you uh, oh it's not actually showing up in here have I killed Java Completely somehow. Uh, okay. Yeah, I have. I've completely killed it. Why? Good night, cheers, wicked. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it soon as well. It's, it's, it's getting on. I think we've achieved what we need to achieve. And apparently, I've completely destroyed my Java instance. A little tip, if you don't want to crash Java, don't do a loop that looks like that, or else you will crash it. Oh, it's working now. It must have must have fixed itself. So this is the, uh, the very quick way. You can see the raster time is really nice here, but we're using all the way up to... Yeah, but we're using that amount there. It's... Uh, what is that exactly? That's 7k total there we're using, which is quite a lot really. Um, I mean, way way more than you'd want to be using normally. Um, whereas the the slower way uses a lot less. So the slower way uses about just under 2k. But as I say, you can you can um, if you were to set the colours to be tiles instead and only do it every other row like this. And this isn't going to work for, for uh, 
this isn't going to work for this particular setup because the tiles aren't right but you can see now we've cut that down to just over 4k um, and actually our raster time is all the way up here we're not even barely even touching the um, uh, but barely even touching the time in the in the in the top border after the the bottom v blank so that's really efficient but as you can see it doesn't work for here because it's now copying the wrong colors uh, it would it would work with those tiles set up like that so um okay i'm going to leave this code as it is with these both of these in here so if you want to have a play around um i think it's fairly well commented um i might just have a quick glance through and see if i need to add any more comments in uh, joystick speed controls is fine don't really need to add anything in there update scroll uh, okay add something in here wait for next line and force invalid Vic display mode to hide the glitch the bottom of the screen and this is kind of explanatory I'll move that up there because it's kind of for the whole thing uh, raster is stable there yep that's all documented I promised Amok I'd, uh, I'd, I'd document this properly because otherwise it's um it's going to be difficult for you know without kind of a, a written summary it'd be difficult to to really understand what's going on without being told exactly what's going on that's fine that's fine get rid of that don't need that now that's all documented uh, map data in X and screen column in Y pick the current buffer uh, let's scroll this is, this is fairly explanatory but uh, apply the X scroll value Yep, I think that pretty much covers it. I think everything else is documented. Uh, so I will delete the test file from there because I don't want that in there. And I will upload this as it stands. Uh, if you guys do do anything with this, please share it with me. I'd be excited to see what you guys can do with this. Um, I, I've literally just taken the map from Ghosts and Goblins, but I'm pretty sure if you spent some time in Charpad, yourself a nice two by two tile set um with you know with color per tile and, and optimize that um in fact let me put a comment back in the color optimization here uh where is it in this one here um can update alternate rows only if using color Per tile. Uh, yeah. And again, I mean, you can make it even better if you did. So I think um, I think Mayhem uses four by four tiles. Uh, I don't know if they're color per tile, but um, if you use four by four tiles, then you only have to do a quarter of the color update if you do color per tile. I think that kind of explains everything now. Um, yeah, cool. All right. And on that note, I'm going to call it a night and I will upload this to GitHub and I'll see you all on Saturday. It would be now. Yep. Saturday for the last stream until probably sometime shortly after Christmas. Like I say, I, I will probably do uh, a stream on the Monday. I think it's the 
uh, the 9th of December, uh, just before I go to Finland, I may do a PC gaming stream. So it won't be Commodore related. It will be it'll be PC stuff only, or maybe some Raspberry Pi stuff. Depends what what, I'm, what I've got set up. But um, yeah, all right. Uh, let's see. Who can we raid? Ah, uh, oh, Moonbeam's on. Let's raid Moonbeam Arcade. Cool. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, no problem, guys. Thanks, thanks for coming along. It's been really fun. I'm gonna do a couple more of these. I think I may alternate between effects grab bags. Uh, game dissects and showing some of the routines like this. Uh, I think a, a scrolling's kind of a cool one. We might do um, a four-way scroller at some point because it's that's always a tricky thing to do. Um, so we'll probably just do a traditional version of that at some point. But yeah, we'll we'll touch on some more effects. Uh, we might do actually the next one we might do might be FLD. So the thing that's on my starting soon screen where you can move the screen fast up and down. I've shown you how to move the screen fast left and right. I can show you how to move it up and down as well. Um, cool. Alright, good night guys. I'll go and raid Moonbeam now. Take care.